Hello, beautiful souls. You're listening to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. Did you know that you can listen to this show everywhere podcasts are found? It's true. Now, I have three free gifts just for you. First gift, I give away a new reading each week to a person who's left a five-star positive review of this show, then submitted it to me using the contact form at theangelmedium.com backslash contact. I hope I'm calling your number next. Second gift, if you'd like a new daily angel message, join me on Insta at Angel Podcast. Third free gift, if you'd like to know the name of one of your guardian angels so that you can work with them even more closely, go to the homepage of my website, theangelmedium.com, and submit your contact info at the very top. I'll email you back personally with the name of one of your angels. Okay, as we begin the show, I want you to feel the presence of your angels surrounding you. And just know that the loving, positive messages you resonate with today are messages for you from your angels and loved ones on the other side. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And you know that we share angel stories every single week. And friends, we have beautiful angel stories to share with you today. Lucas is here from Kansas. Lucas, welcome to the show. Yes, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. Oh, thank you for being here. And thank you for volunteering to help me with my social media because uh, I need you and you're just so amazing. So I just wanted to say how much I appreciate you. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you too. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have you take it away and share your first story. Yes. So, uh, Julie, you know, this past year has been the highest high and the lowest low. You know, I got married um, it was awesome. We had all these like amazing family times. And then in July, uh, the 16th of July, my niece passed away from a terrible ATV accident. And, you know, she was only 15. It was a few weeks before her 16th birthday. Um, they had just moved back to Kansas. And so um, we were blessed with a lot of good time together. Um, but of course, at that age, um, you know, that's it's, you never have enough. And um, one thing I will just say before I, I have some amazing stories about her that are just awesome and your podcast, you know, has, has really, I think, saved me in so many ways, you know, you talk about intuition and all these amazing lessons. And I think finding, you know, through her loss of her finding your podcast has really just opened me up in so many ways. And I truly am, am thankful for that because I know that's what my niece wanted, you know, and, um, and wanted us to still communicate and work with her. So I'll just start back here. Um, so one day it was kind of interesting, um, shortly after her funeral, um, I was in my backyard. Um, I was kind of struggling with this, like uncle guilt, like, man, I just, you know, the woulda, could have kind of things like, man, we just should just move back. We were doing all these, you know, all these goals that we had. And I'm in my backyard and I have um, a friend that I have not talked to in 10 years text me. And I just, I like look at the name and I'm like, you know, I'm trying to mope here. Like, come on, like, what are you doing? And her text said, you know, you can keep talking to her, don't you? And I am like, what? Because I had been talking to my niece. I had been, you know, t literally having a conversation. You know, in my mind, it was one way. And this person who I haven't talked to in 10 years texts me this. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, oh, I know I sound crazy. But, you know, I just, it was coming through strong. I want to make sure you know, um, know what's going on with that. And, um, and so that's where that was. And so it, we kind of ended the conversation. She said, if you ever want to have messages or something, let me know. And, and, and we can kind of work through it. I can't guarantee anything, but I'm, I'm here for it. And so I kind of was still emotional, and um, I, I told my husband, I said, hey, I'm going to go to Kinley's grave. I packed up my chair, you know, had, you know, water, whatnot, and I get in my car, and I'm driving towards the cemetery. And as I am a pulling into the cemetery, Rachel texts me, um, who had just messaged me prior, said, call me. I was like, oh, my goodness. 
And so I, I called her and she's like, I'm so sorry. She's like, Kinley is coming through so strong. I, I have to share this. She said, I have to share you, this story with you and you have to share this. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And so she's going through and she's telling me all these beautiful things and, and all these messages and all this stuff. And she knew things. There's no way I hadn't talked to her in 10 years. Like she did things that we would not have known. And, um, it was just, it was just crazy. And I'm writing on receipts. I'm writing on papers and all of these things. Well, the two things I want to, I want to tell you about, um, that stick out from Rachel's message, slow down. And when you see the light, it's her. And then I do have a couple of things about grasshoppers and numbers that I'll get to if we have time, but the slow down. And when you see the light, it's her is, is a big piece of that. So I, the next day after this reading and Julie, you, I talk fast. So if you need to interrupt me, you interrupt away. <laughs> um, oh but... no, you are totally, totally good. <laughs> this is so beautiful. I've got like shiver bumps uh, when you got that text message. Oh, I still do. I still do, but it gets so much better. So the night before it was very emotional. And some of the big things she said, Rachel, the, the healer was like, she said, you need to underline this, highlight this and, and the slow down piece. So the next day I'm, I am just oh my goodness, I am just like, this was crazy. Where am I at with this? Is this, even, was this real? But it was like, oh my gosh, it's, it just felt too real. Like it just was. I'm in the backyard with my my beautiful friend, she many. We're kind of walking around. I'm kind of mopey still, just very hard, trying to go back to work and that's difficult. And my house is getting painted. The contractor yells for me, Lucas, Lucas. And I'm like, what do you want? Just just paint the house, Trevor. Like, you know, I, I'm not in the mood. And he yells, Lucas, you need to slow it down. I'm like, what'd you say? And he's like, you need to slow down. You are just all, you need to just slow down. And, and I'm like, okay, like, I think my lunch is over. <laughs> I'm like, this was too crazy. I mean, within 24 hours, with 12 hours. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I, my sister um, who um, lost um, her daughter, um, she, I left my house because she was going to the insurance agency um, to, uh, go through that process, life insurance, all that awful stuff that you have to relive, relive, relive. And we get in here and the woman who's helping us, she also lost a son three weeks before his birthday. And so at the very end, she's kind of emotional. And she says, <laughs> she's like, I have something to show you. And I said, and my sister and I were in there. We said, okay, yeah, we, we we'll look at it. And she's like, before I show you, if you see the light, it's her. Or when you see the light, it's her. We look at each other and we're like, what? Because we had just talked, because after my reading, I had told her everything. And we're like, oh my gosh. And we like goosebumps right now, goosebumps. And did you um, ever watch and, that Ted Lasso? Did you watch the last uh, last season of Ted Lasso? I didn't. I did not add it to my list. Oh my gosh. So there's one point where um like the main woman who like runs the soccer team, uh Rebecca, I think, she goes in to see the psych psychic because her mom tells her to, and she's so skeptical. And the way that they portrayed the psychic is just so cheesy, like the way that all television shows <laughs> want to portray the psychic. And yes. um and the psychic is like, I'm getting a green matchbook and I'm getting this and I'm getting that you're going to have a girl or like you you have a daughter. And throughout the season, like it all comes into play <laughs> and she's like freaking out, freaking out, freaking out. But it's totally reminding me of your story because it was like to a T exactly what the healer said. Yes. Yes. And it just was wild. And Julie, you know, when she showed us the video, it was when we did the balloon lift off, um, you know, a release at her funeral. And there was this shiny flickering. I mean, it literally was all over. It was like, it was so excited. It, it just was all over. And then a few days later, another friend from a whole different angle, other side of the sun. So like, you know, people like to say all these things. It was a whole nother one of the same thing going. And it was just it was literally an the most beautiful thing. Yes, an orb. And it was the most beautiful thing. And it was just like, oh my gosh, like she was there. And have you ever, yeah, I'm going to stop you for a second. No, have you're good. You're you good. ever zoomed in on those orbs to see if there's a face in the orb? 
So I have zoomed in the most videos I've gotten because it's happened a few other times. Yeah. And it, it's, I, we, I don't see a face, but it's like, it literally, it looks like it has wings. It's flo it's not like some little light thing. I, I've seen those. Yeah. This is not yeah. that. This is very different. It's something that's there and it's beautiful. And, um, Amazing. you know, it's just, it's just awesome. And, you know, my sister and her kids, she just um, went through a divorce and all that stuff. It was in the middle of um, her daughter's you know, passing away, awful, lots of life changes, moved back to Kansas. I mean, all these things happening. Well, she surprised her two other children, uh, my niece and nephew, Lathan and Audrey. Um, she surprised them with the house. And it's actually across the street from my house. And so it's just wild. And so she surprised them. They got a lot of stuff done. They still have a lot of work to be done. But um, at Christmas, they woke up and they had a scavenger hunt. And they went all the places. My mom recorded with her camera in her house. And then at the very end, like after they left my house, um, I recorded in uh, Laura's new house. There was an orb again. And it is the most beautiful. It looked like it was like so excited. Like it's Christmas morning. Like let's get going. And it was just all all of our videos, different phones, different recordings, different, different, like, it, and it was, it was the same, it was the same thing. And it just, it was beautiful. And being able to capture that, it just was like, it just, and we felt that we felt her a part of that. And, um, you know, I just, I just think that was an awesome way for her to share that she was there to have that evidence to have that piece of yeah. her, you know, in those meaningful moments. I don't know that I'm going to say this in like the most succinct way, but um, I, you know, there are just some things where you're like, I'm not sure about that. And then there are things where you're like, I know, like, I know, like, I know, like, I am, yeah. I, God strike me dead if this is not true. Um, and I know that there are skeptics out there. And I know people say, well, what about this? And what? I don't care. I, I don't give an S about nope. it. If it makes you feel, a connection to your loved one on the other side. That is your truth. That is mm -hmm. real. That is a connection that I always see as energy strands from your heart to their heart. And it can never be broken, not that you would want it to, but it mm -hmm. can't go away. There's that line um, that Anne Hathaway says in Interstellar, she's talking to Matthew McConaughey and um, she's like, well, what's the utility in loving somebody who's past, you know, it transcends time and space and it really does. So if, if you're looking at pictures, listeners, um, that have these orbs and other people around you are poo-pooing it. Oh, well, it's just a light glare and it, the sun does that and it just shows up. If it makes you feel a connection to your person on the other side, what you are tuning into is this energy from your heart to their, or your soul to their soul, and nothing should be able to take that away from you. So tune out the haters, tune out the people who poo-poo it, and just know that you're connecting and Every form of connection is a wonderful and should be savored. Ready for a little getaway that completely resets your energy? We're hosting a live in-person spiritual retreat called A Whole New You. It's the weekend of October 4th in Oak Brook, Illinois. This spiritual retreat is all about your own personal healing and growth, reconnecting with yourself, learning to connect with your angels. And I'm going to talk about all new angels that I've never talked about anywhere before. And you're going to leave with more personal peace, purpose, clarity, and confidence than ever before. Learn more and see the itinerary at theangelmedium.com backslash retreat. That's theangelmedium.com backslash retreat. Links are in the show notes. And friend, I cannot wait to meet you and hug you in person. And, you know, it's funny that you say that because I, I feel like that's something that I've been through. And I'm like, you know what? The woman in the insurance place I told you about told that exact thing. People are going to say stuff, but you know what? If it connects you and you feel it in your heart and soul, 
it, it is for you. Yeah. And, and Julie, it's funny. So we have an old house, um, very old house, lots of fun problems. You know, if we had about $87 million, it'd probably be finally fixed, but <laughs> we have this old motion light outside of our house. I, we've literally waved in front of it. I've had sticks. I've been on lat, like it doesn't turn on. Okay. It was broke. My husband was supposed to fix it. We all know how that works. <laughs> it equals it's not fixed. And, and it's hilarious. We have cameras outside of our house as well. And so this light, it was, and it goes back to the light theme about when it's light, it's her, you know, and um, my husband kept going and he parks his car right outside, right by this light, never comes on for him, you know, when he needs it. And it was so funny. We were out there in the morning with our dogs. I was on the other side of the fence. He was looking at this chair. This patio chair had moved to his car and it didn't hit it. Didn't dent it. It was like if the wind did it. Why didn't it keep going? And it happened three times ish, uh, different times. And he literally has his hands on his hips. The camera's capturing this. And he's like, I just want to know who's doing this. And then right then that light comes on. And we call it the Kinley light because literally <laughs> it, it has a mind of its own. And every time we kind of need it or we're talking about her or something, it comes on. It is literally the craziest thing. And when it came on, I you hear me in the video, I'm laughing. And he just shakes his head, walks in the house. And I just thought, because <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just that it's that beautiful, you know? And um yeah. another time another time, um, we had a some family fun and my husband went upstairs to our bedroom and that light is right outside our bedroom too. And uh, he was up there and I, I kind of went up there to check on him to see how he was doing. And that light was on. It is not dark out yet. It is still, but it is, is kind of dusk, you know, and that light is on and he's sitting in the corner by the window right <laughs> next to it. And I come in there and I just, you know, give him some love and I'm, you know, hug and on. I said, you know, Kinley's right here with you too. She's taking care of you. And he's like, I know. <laughs> and it's just. It's just crazy. And uh, Julie, another story with that, because I talked about our bedroom is right next to that light. And it, uh, one night, um, my husband's going to come in, by the way, eventually, uh, if I keep going this way. But our door kept opening. And it just kept opening. And we have this old house. You know, it's one of those things. You just, is it, is it settling? You know, it kept popping open. I was like, I was freaked out. So I called him, made him come upstairs. He, he like, you just have to really put your, you know, you know, the man, man way to do it, man. It's like, he puts it, you know, all his weight into it. The door shuts. He, he, he sits on the bed and he starts playing his game again. That door shoots open and he pauses it. And he's like, and he's like, well, and I said, well, you know, I wonder who's doing that. And that freaking Kinley light came on. <laughs> <laughs> And he's just shaking his head. You know, he's one of those, he has to find a reason. I was like, and I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is. And I just, I think it's great. And, you know, my last story kind of with, with that light is um, last night when I was talking about a little bit before we came on here, I was going over some of these stories and I'm like, oh my gosh, like Kinley and, you know, my grandma and grandpa, today's my grandpa's birthday too. That's passed. Um, but they're the three people I feel like I, I reach too often and I've gotten some, um, some validation with that. Um, and I said, Hey, like, I have so many stories. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Do you justice, especially, you know, Julie's so good and she's very busy and, and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, now you guys better come visit me tomorrow. And I swear, open my eyes after, you know, having my peace and calm that freaking Kinley light is on. And I was like, I'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and it was so funny because you were worried about time. I didn't know that, but I kept getting this message this morning after meditation, um, text Lucas and tell him or ask him if he can come on a half an hour early, because I feel like I I'm just back to back. Like I have been back to back since 7am and I don't stop until three. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just tight. Like I only have five minute spaces. Um, and they're like, he needs more time. So I, I texted you and you're like, yeah, well, reason you're psychic. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, if you would have seen, I wish someone could have seen my face this morning. I was like, are you serious? And I was like, okay, well, it looks like we're, I have the whole list here and then we'll just see what we have time for. So this is perfect. I'm just, it's just, it, it's a beautiful thing when that stuff happens. You know, once again, it just validates what's out there and the world is so much bigger than just what we see or feel right now, you know? Oh, yeah. But this can be your entire life. Like um, this morning, I had this insight from meditation too. And I reached out to one of my um, medium friends and I go, 
listen, uh, I got this message and she goes, holy, sh sorry, holy ass. Oh, uh, did like, you're definitely psychic, Julie. I was just about to reach out to you. I just dreamt about that last night and we have to go do this together. Um, and, uh, and so this is your everyday life. And when it happens like this, it just feels so comforting. Um, the lights, I really haven't had a ton of signs with lights, but they come through at really, really profound moments. Like the only time my lights have failed me, and there's what, like almost 550 podcast episodes, um, was the day my grandma passed away and the lights were going nonstop in the episode as soon as I hung up from that or, or stopped the call, the Zoom call, I got the call from my mom that grandma was gone. Um, there's also this thing happening right now where I've totally let go and surrendered everything about this TV show. I've been working on different TV show concepts with producers and different production agencies since 2019. And I'm like, God, if you want this to happen, it'll happen. You just... I'm just going to breathe, be, and live, and if you want it to come together, it will. So our producer, every time I'm on the phone with her, she has one of those lights that just goes crazy, but it doesn't go crazy all the time. She's like, Julie, it doesn't happen when I'm not talking to you or somebody else about the show. It's It only happens when I'm texting or calling somebody or working on the show. It just starts going crazy. Um, and by the way, we've talked to, like between the three of us who are working on this, we've talk to like the biggest mediums within the world and without prompting them and, and asking about the TV show, all three mediums have come back and said, what's this TV show? It's going to happen. It's going to be bigger than you think it is. Um, but it's just, and again, like if it doesn't, all right, it's totally in the universe's hands, but how great is it to have that light and just to feel that concrete? Because to me, does it feel that way to you? It's completely Absolutely. concrete. Absolutely. Absolutely. And before her passing and even before I found your podcast, which has been life changing for me, you know, I, I, I wasn't in that mindset. I was drifting. I was coasting. And I think, you know, through my healer that I talked about earlier, you know, that intuition piece, she mentioned that you need to work on your intuition. And she talked about how my niece Kinley said that I was very hard to communicate with because my head was so busy and I needed to slow down. And literally, I switched jobs because of it. I, I've, um, I'm at a healthy place mentally, relationship, family, and honestly, who knows? I mean, I could have, if I was going down the route I was, I, I would not have been here to support my family because of it, because I was not healthy. And then now I'm able to open up this communication with my loved ones, um, Kinley the most, but even with my grandma and grandpa, um, it's been a beautiful thing. And your podcast has really been the driving force with my understanding and learning, and it's really filled my cup and also calmed my soul. And I think through that process, you know, I'm having this relationships that continues way past when our body decides that it's done. Um, and I think that's a beautiful thing. I think it's yeah. beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, I know you've got another story, but I just want to ask this. Are you and your husband having a baby? Well, we, we, we are not, but we have two dogs. And shortly after Kinley passed away, we ended up getting a brand new ba baby to us, fur baby um, dog. Okay. Is that the girl? Yes. Okay. Because um, she keeps talking about the baby girl. Well, that would be on par with how we communicate with them. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are our babies. We we say the girls and our babies and uh, children are not in our plan, but um, fur babies definitely are. That's amazing. That's amazing. She loves this dog. And I don't know if you see things through this dog. Sometimes dogs just like look at something and you're like, there is nothing there. What are you looking at? But she communicates with this dog. 
Oh, absolutely. And so we have a Frenchie and then we have a Bochi, which is a Chihuahua Boston, which means it's just a hot mess of crazy in our house. And <laughs> these dogs, it, they will be barking in the corner, crazy, looking at things. And um, she loved Minnie, our Frenchie. And so when we got our second dog, it is the most gentle, amazing dog, does not bark. And it, it, it is like everything Kinley was as a person. And so I feel like a piece of her was provided to us to fill our heart even more. And, but they will look at the corners and just be like, Rubber. and my husband's like, oh my goodness. He's like, just stop it, just stop it. And I'm like, well, it is what it is, especially the light where the Kinley light is. They're always barking out there or they're looking in the corner and the, our our, uh, our new girl dog that we have does this whole like crooked head look and is looking. I'm like, where are you looking? What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. That's awesome to hear. When I tune into her energy, too, I keep seeing the actual physical ATV. And like if I'm holding on to the steering wheel uh, and I'm like on the ATV down and kind of to the left of the steering wheel, she's pointing to something like did something malfunction? Because she keeps pointing to a part of the ATV, like there's something underneath. If I opened it up, there's something right there that kind of malfunctioned. Yeah, so they uh, they were driving on gravel roads, um, and she had her dad and her dad's best friend on there with her, and um, they weren't able to stop. Um, the you know weren't able to stop, and um, they she was she they were all three were thrown off. Um, but, um, she's the one that, um, because of where she was driving and how, how the ATV went, um, you know, wasn't able to, to make it. I'm so, so sorry. Um, I also feel like I want you to connect me with her mom, um, because there's just stuff that she needs to bring through for mom. Um, but let's keep going with your angel yes. stories. Yes. And I agree with it. Like, I think her mom is really struggling to, to, be get her intuition at a level where she can absorb that and i almost at times like i try to share when i feel things hear things see things but i i you know i think there's a sadness that it's not coming and i don't know how to help that so definitely think she, you know she needs to be plugged in with that but um kind of going off the light real fast i shared this photo on facebook i think you guys uh oh it kind of is seen do you see the background a little bit the the wings there Yes, yes. So I know I have my my weird um, blackout um, or blurry out thing, but I love this photo so much and it has the 555 on it because I literally was like on there and I looked at it and it just kind of, it's just on par. And what's so crazy about this photo, we've used this photo um, for her funeral. Um, we've had it for her obituary. Well, for those who are just listening and can't see it, it's a picture of her like a senior portrait almost. Um, but the way that the brush is behind her, it looks like it's these two massive, beautiful angel wings. And this was shortly before she passed, correct? Yes, it was the it was like the last professional photo shoot that they had um, as a family. And it's a beautiful photo. She's smiling. She's gorgeous. We didn't even, and we say we, mostly me, I didn't even see the wing piece. Like I literally had the, I had her photo that we used at the funeral on my mantle. Um, I've since gave it to my sister to put in her new house, but I was holding it <laughs> like a good brother. And, um, but I didn't even notice it until I put something on Facebook and everybody's like, oh my gosh, there's angel wings. There's angel wings. like, oh my gosh, there's angel wings there. And I was just so, I mean, I just was like, this, this is crazy. Um, but I had it on the mantle and it's on the way to the stairs going up to our, the bedrooms or upstairs in our old house. And, um, before I went to bed, I'd always like, you know, kiss my hand, put it on the frame, say goodnight, Kinley. And then I'd flip the light switch and the freaking thing went crazy. So going about lights again, like it was, it was like, sometimes it would be like a quick little one or it would be like, like a disco show. And I'm like, what the heck? You know, it didn't happen with magic Devin. with that electricity. She is so good. I mean, literally it is crazy. And, um, and going off of the staircase real quick. So I got this beautiful stone, um, from one of my shops that I went to in Wichita. And, um, and now that I, we're talking about, it, I can't remember the name of it, but it kind of enhances your intuition and, and connection to the other side. And I bought it. There was a full moon outside. I charged it, all that kind of stuff. And then the day that I had it like finally done, I said, okay, Kenley, Grandma, Grandpa, if you guys want to communicate with me, I am open to it and I'm ready to go. 
well, I forgot that I had asked for that because when you ask, forget, <laughs> you don't forget. <laughs> and so the next morning I got up at five, six with the dogs and I was down there. Um, I'm a morning person. My husband is not. And I hear him coming down the stairs and I'm like, Hey, Devin, good morning. And I'm like, Oh, daddy's coming down. Nothing. Someone was walking down those stairs, but it was not him. And I, I was so scared. I like went over there and I'm like peeking up and there's a video. Cause we have a camera that, that pops down. <laughs> And I'm like creeping, nothing. I go upstairs, he's sound asleep. I'm even more freaked out. I come back downstairs, something tells me, Lucas, check your camera video. And I'm like, I never check this. I have 20,000 notifications on this. So also world, please don't rob me. But, um, you know, I don't check it. I checked it. <laughs> and I and it, there's a video of me creeping to the stairs like a scared little cat. And it is a light show. I flip the light on and it's like, they're all going. Like all the lights, my phone, and it is just in real life. In the moment, that did not happen. But in that, it was going crazy. And I just, my heart stopped because at first I was scared. And then I finally realized I had asked for that. Yeah. And they put all of their energy into, hey, you want this? Here we go. We're going to play a little game. And now you have video of it. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Okay. So I got to tell this story too. I haven't told this yet on the show, but um, have you watched that TV show ghosts? It's like really popular. And I don't like to talk about them as ghosts. They're loved ones on the other side because they don't come through ghosty. They're just fun and loving positive energies. Um, but there's a uh, Thorson, a Thorfinn, uh, in the show. And he can, like each of the ghosts has their own little power. Um, and he can control the lights, but that kind of reminded me of, of that. But it was so funny because my family has been watching this show every single night, uh, before we go to bed. And, um, my husband and my daughter looked at each other the other night and they go, wouldn't it be amazing if we had ghosts in our house? And they were like, yes, that would be so fun. So, um, the next day they're at school and I am like taking a nice long bath, a nice long shower. I'm like taking time to get ready in the morning. And I come out of the shower with just these great ideas. So I'm in my robe, hair in a towel, just going to my office to write them down. And I hear, because sometimes my father-in-law will come over to the house like unannounced and you'll just hear like, hello, hello, you know, somebody shouting from downstairs. And I'm like, oh shit, you know, I gotta go get ready. Uh, and, um, and, but it wasn't a, a guy's voice. It was this woman's voice. And it was like, hello, hello. And so I'm freaked out because no woman should be in my house, but it also sounds like really, really nice and really jolly. And I'm not in a headspace to kind of tune into spirit because I've just channeled all of this. I've got this huge download of information that I just want to go right out. So I like run to go get my phone because it's in another room. And then I run into the bathroom and I'm kind of like, hello, hello. And nobody's answering me back. <laughs> so I close the door and I had my husband come home from school and check all of the house. Everything was locked. Everything was locked. And I was like, okay, guys, I know my family said it would be really great to have ghosts in the house, but if it's not related to our spirit teams, I don't want them in here. So please have them leave because I never hear voices that sound like somebody else's voice, but it was somebody else's voice. Yeah. Oh. I love that. We get so much um, crap because we live in an old house and there's always something. I think one time I almost um, <laughs> choked my husband out with sage one time. <laughs> I was freaked out. And I was like, you know what? It is what it is. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And he was sleeping. I was over him. I was like, okay, like, bring that in. <laughs> um, um, but uh, the last little piece, if you don't mind, if we have some yeah. time, I want to talk about grasshoppers. So it's just it's just wild. And, you know, all these beautiful things are just awesome. My sister, who um, lost her daughter, was at her grave shortly after her funeral. And she was out there talking. And she said this grasshopper literally, like, was looking at her. And it got closer and closer. And, cl and it just was watching her. And she just was talking to it like it was Kinley, right? Well, it it's just it's just crazy because you know we're on we're all over the place. But we, she felt something. She's like, you know what? I just talked to it and it was great. Well, shortly after that, because my family had just uh, moved back to Kansas, the other two children, 
you know, who lost their sister, they were getting ready for school. So it was their first day at a new school without their big sister, right? And um, very emotional. My sister uh, became a para. And so it was her first day too. And my mom, they were living with my mom and she was in there getting, um, helping them get ready in the bathroom. They look up on the mirror and there is a grasshopper in their house on the mirror in the bathroom. Normally I would be like, ick, but I but I was like, how cool is that? And they're talking to it and they're like, oh, thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for doing it. That grasshopper stayed in the same spot all day, did not move. It, and it was almost like it wanted to know how the day was, right? And uh, my mom ended up having to take it and put it outside. Um, and she's a very much an animal lover. And so she just like, oh, she wanted to keep it there. But she's like, well, at the same time, I don't want to crawl in my bed. <laughs> um, but what's wild about that too is, so going back to my grasshopper theme my niece and nephew were playing in the basement and they came running upstairs and they said grandma Dee, Dee grandma Dee, Dee, guess what we, guess what we have here and my mom's like oh it better not be anything crazy my nephew opens up his hand and it is a toy grasshopper we we don't have i never had a toy grasshopper they didn't have a toy grasshopper somehow this toy grasshopper ended up down there well my sister and I were laughing about all these grasshopper stories that we continue to have. We were talking to one of her friends from Missouri, where Kinley and they grew up, and she was laughing. And she said that day, her the teacher of her young child sent a picture of her kid playing with a grasshopper uh, toy. <laughs> so it's just like one thing after another. And, you know, your episodes, Julie... You know, I was thinking about that that story because, you know, I knew this was day was coming. I was so excited to spend some time with you and I'm driving for work and I'm going to this town about 30 minutes away. And I, I've driven this way many times before I, I look out the window. I know what's around there. That's part of my job. And I was like, OK, I'm listening to your episode and talk about science. I'm like, you know what? You can ask for more. And the person who was there was like, I know I get some, but I, I'm kind of selfish. I want some more. I want some more of this. You know, I love it. And I said, you know what, Kinley? I want another one. Like, I want another sign. I know you're doing great. You, I appreciate it, but I want another one. I kid you not. Right then, I look over, and these huge metal statues I've seen a million times, there was a huge metal grasshopper. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I'm like, should I turn around? It's a four-way, like, four-lane highway. Like, I'm about to just whip this thing in reverse. Like, it just, I was blown away. I was like, Lucas, it's not causing an accident today, but the, how awesome is this? And I want to show you this thing because it ties into my last little grasshopper story. Um, so I don't know if you can see this. I have a little blurry stuff on. I wish I knew how to turn that off, but it's a little grasshopper and it's on a sunflower. So I had talked to my boss and I said, hey, I want to get some pictures of Butler County and my office spice it up, make it look nice, you know, have some good stuff here. I go to the office. She hands me a stack of photos, his assistant, and I literally flip it over. And this is the picture, grasshopper and sunflower. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And so it's just what we think about, both of those things, sunflower and grasshoppers. Well, I have it underneath my clock in my office, which is behind me. Um, and I, this uh, a few days ago, I knew this was coming up right. I'm, she's on my mind even more, which she's already on a lot. And I just had this like, and I look at the clock and I look at the picture because it makes me think of her. And right when I look at that picture, this the song fight song came on my assistant's computer in the whole other room well when i used to visit my niece's grave the last one of the last beautiful moments was her singing fight song at a talent show and so when i heard that song and i when i used to visit her grave i would play her singing and that was and i've been thinking about it like man i need to get to her i need to get to her grave i haven't been out there in a little bit and I just something made me think, and I look at the wall, and then right then I hear that. What a beaut! Like, how does that all work? You know, it was just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And what happens is from the other side, they know everything that's coming. So they know when we're going to ask for the sign. And it's they're able to just line everything up. And it is, it's just so wonderful. We were talking about that last night in uh, one of the angel membership events, how when you believe in signs and synchronicities and just all of, because they send us all of the signs. It's not just one. It's all of it collectively makes us feel that concrete energy within our hearts. And um, they just know. 
they know. And we can get all of the signs from them. I'm so excited. Uh, I want to bring through some messages because um, she had me write down a, a lot over here. So the first thing that she had me write down is um, write letters back and forth. It's something that she wants to do with you. And it might feel weird, like, okay, well, I'm kind of stepping into the role of like channeling her voice, but <laughs> it's okay. Just step into the role and write her a letter, even if it's just a paragraph and allow her to write back to you. Now, when you allow her to write back to you, get into oneness first. So I call that, um, I know you have to scroll a little bit if you're listening to the podcast, Angels and Awakening on the podcast app. But if you scroll all the way down, um, the third episode is called My Favorite Meditation. And I walk people how to get into the highest vibration that is. And from that frequency, because it's all about your vibration, it's all about the frequency. You know, if you're turning an old school radio to a certain station and you don't have the dial just right, you don't hear a person's voice. You hear static. Shh, and that's not what we want. So you... You have a lot of people who try to do this work, but they're like, Julie, I was in the car and I was taking my kids over to soccer practice and then I got to go with this. And I was trying to communicate with my loved ones. And I was like, too much. Your vibration is like all over the place. They don't have the right frequency to come in on. So oneness, what it really does is dial you to the right station so that you can hear from her. So once you're in that vibration and you can get used to it, that's why I've got a oneness course. I've got the um, deepening your connection with your loved ones on the other side course on the website, because when you get into that vibration, oh my gosh, you write a paragraph to her and you'll get a page back sometimes, multiple pages back, sometimes a paragraph, whatever she needs to communicate will come through that channel. Um, so that's the first thing. And then she had me write down the angels of blessings are really with you and your husband, that there is so much um, I, that your souls really want to do and see and mm -hmm. experience here in this lifetime. And she goes, it's all happening, all of it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a couple of pieces to that. She goes, um, allow this to open you. She goes, it has, but allow it to keep expanding you because it's really expanding your consciousness right now. And don't be afraid to step in to what she's going to have this lead to for you. So oftentimes spirit will show me this symbol where if people aren't watching on YouTube, I have my two hands like out parallel and they're just kind of crossing each other a little bit in the middle. Um, you're you're going to always have your full-time job, but you have this passion project on the mm -hmm. side. I can see as she's showing me like on opening up your head and I'm looking into your mind that this inner critic kind of says to you sometimes, well, I'm not an expert or I'm not this, I'm not that. You're here to share. You're a messenger. And she just says like, allow it to open you to become that messenger, that channel. Don't be afraid to step into that. Um, don't allow that inner voice to tell you that you're wrong or you're bad or that you shouldn't. There's something that you and her are going to create through this. Okay. I see this all the time in my sessions where my dad is still doing a lot of work in this earth, but he's doing it through me, through my brothers, through my sister. And they show me that all the time. Your niece is doing work through everyone, but you have this voice that she's trying to use and this belief and this hope that people need, okay? And then she's taken me into the next part that I wrote down. Not everybody who listens to this podcast is going to remember this time. You look younger than I am. But in the 1980s, 1990s, there was just so much heartfelt spiritual stuff 
out there, touched by an angel, the movie mm-hmm. Ghost, Field of Dreams. Um, there was a TV show about the angel Michael. There was a movie about mm-hmm. the angel Michael. You couldn't go into Hallmark without seeing all these mini little angels, angels on blankets, angels all over. Um then in the 2000s, it really went to this reality TV show theme, and we've been stuck in that for about 25 years. And what it feels like to me is that we're shifting now with this show Ghosts. Um, Nurse Hadley, who we've had on the show, is getting her own show about end of life and what happens at the end of life. There's a collective, there's not a lot of hope right now with a lot Mm -hmm. of folks. Um, There's a need right now for hope, for a resurgence of angels because they are with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And your belief in angels and your loved ones on the other side changes your entire experience on this planet and makes Mm -hmm. this life more so heaven on earth earth and your niece whispers to you you're part of this and you need to accept that you're part of this i i'm not doing it by myself surely i've got so many people around me who are helping and um so many peers who are are like everybody's got a piece and you're part of that piece Um, so you don't have to like with a force energy within yourself, figure it out. It's just going to come to you because you're taking action, because Mm -hmm. you're allowing yourself to see the signs, because you're exploring and you're curious and you're open. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's just going to be like lightning as you're on your path, it's going to strike you. And it might be like a collection of your letters back and forth that over time becomes a book um, mm-hmm. or something more. I I think that so often so many people are waiting for the entire instruction manual to get started, but really the instructions come one step at, at a time, but they can only come as we're in motion on our path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Love that. Yes. Uh, I feel like you've got questions too. Do you have questions for her? Oh my gosh. I think for me, you know, because the healer that we talked about, you know, had mentioned that she's a teacher on the other side and she's doing lots of big things. Like it's, she's, and, and that the world is, so much more than what we could ever think it is and so much more beautiful and i think for me is i just want to make sure that you know is she do is she you know doing big things it sounds like she is and then is she with our family and you know what does that look like it's kind of what i've always thought and i've i've always hoped that was the case you know um, yeah now does she have two brothers she's a brother and a sister Okay. Um, because she makes me feel like she's really close to both of them, but I feel like a very, very deep heart to heart connection specifically. Is that with her sister? Um, she's very close to both of them. Um, her brother Lathan is autistic and so he's the middle child and they were very close. Um, and obviously they're still trying to figure out some, you know, just, what that looks like and how do we support him? Cause it's different. Um, obviously it's tough anyway, but when someone has a certain kind and different needs than what society tells you, um, you have to figure that out. And she was as the oldest, she was like the bonus mom for those kids, you know, and she had a big heart. And, you know, one thing I didn't have a chance to tell you yet, and I know we're approaching the time is she had such a huge heart and you know an example of that is for birthdays she would have instead of people bringing gifts they would do donations for animal shelters and then she would give them um for her during this past year before she passed she was saving money for a car and she baked her mom was a baker amazing baker amazing she's following in her mom's footsteps and she used half the money for a local cause and half the money to save in for a car and in her name, it's 
and I don't, you know, a little I guess, shameless plug is kind like Kinley Memorial, and that's K E N L E E. It's on Facebook, and it tells the story of what we, her mom, the community has been able to do with the resources from helping kids, you know, families in need. And it's that ripple effect. Um, when she passed away, a number of her friends continued the baking and donating it to local causes. They they did a big drive for animals. And the, the love just keeps going. And I think that that's the beauty is through her passing, it's opened up people's eyes on what you had mentioned, that hope, that kindness. And it's just beautiful to be a part of that. And, um, and I think, you know, people that have hearts like that, there's no way her work's done. You know, she's still doing lots of stuff and helping us um, on this side to make sure that we continue that. And I just, I just love it. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I just wanted you to see that I wrote down brother. Um, and, uh, and she really wanted to talk about him. I, I do know that she's working with him a ton from the other side. You know, I, Lucas, I wouldn't have started this podcast without my dad. Like his, his passing was the catalyst for the entire direction that my life has gone. And that's what I'm saying to you about her that, um, in a way, oh, this is so sweet. I've never seen it this way, but she just said, we're their angels because they can't do the work that they wanted to do here on earth without our movement and our physical action. And so um, with that said, she's working through you in that way, but she's also working miracles through this charity. She's also mm -hmm. working miracles um for her brother, for her sister to help her mom, um, to just set up both of them. And I, I know that it's work here, but sometimes we do have to open ourselves up to windfalls and to just the miracles that they're trying to bring into our lives. Because, um, I am so grateful that my daughter is where she is today and she's perfect and she's healthy, but we, we were in the world of special needs and, um, I worked for Easter seals for a while and I know how challenging it is, but how special and how beautiful all those souls are, mm -hmm. um, every, every child. And I know that, um, she just wants you and her mom to have peace of mind that her brother and her sister are going to be just fine. Yeah. Awesome. I want to work with her mom a little bit because there's a, a lot of PTSD energy that her mom's yeah. carrying around. And that's one thing that happens when we're carrying around all of this heavy energy which is natural because of what we've experienced. It's hard to breathe. It's hard to feel our own energy. It's hard to connect with the intuition. So that's what a lot of the membership does is kind of take off those heavier layers to allow people to step back into their soul's energy, their soul's voice. And from that point makes connection with the other side easier. Um, so I want to do this. I want to gift her mom with a free year of the angel membership so that she can really step, step into that energy in the angel awesome. membership too. just let her know we have that, um, spirits uplifted. It's a grief type support group um, from the spiritual perspective with an end of life doula who runs it. And I think that that could be very, very helpful as well. Awesome. I think that'll be, that's amazing. And I think it's the work you're doing that's helping, you know, I think like you mentioned, her passing woke me up but it's the work that you're doing and the work that she's doing and all those wonderful, beautiful things that are adding, you know, the fuel to the fire and everything you said was spot on. And I appreciate that. And thank you for all the work you do. 
Oh, thank you. She won't let me go without saying this too. Um, is your husband hysterical sometimes? Like she, <laughs> they would like have each other rolling and laughing yes. because yes. she said, um, would you tell him that I, I feel like they just had this fun way of communicating yes. with each other and making each other laugh. And she's still doing that from the other side. And she's there. <laughs> she's there every time with you as you're laughing as awesome. well. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And that is spot on. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yay. Lucas, thank you so much for being here and sharing your stories. Yes. Thank you so much. And, and I wish you well. And I'm glad we got the extra time today. Thank you. Of course, of course. To everybody listening, if you have an angel story, we would love to have you on the show. You can go over to theangelmedium.com and share your story with me using the contact form uh, on my website. I love you, friends. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. Friends, I need your help reaching as many people as possible. If you'd like to support this podcast and help us spread more hope to the world, please book a session with me, join my angel membership, or take my angel Reiki school. What's the difference? If you'd like to know what messages your angels and loved ones have for you, you'll want to book a session with me. The angel membership is all about your own personal spiritual healing. The membership takes you on a spiritual journey that teaches you how to create your own heaven on earth. And the Angel Reiki School is for those who want to get certified in mediumship, angel messages, and energy healing all at once. These are three ways you can help us share a message of hope and love with more people than ever before. Register for one or all three at theangelmedium.com. That's theangelmedium.com. Now, let's pray together. As we do, I want you to pray in a way where you feel as though everything you want for yourself and the world has already come true, and you're giving thanks. Why? Because this is the best way to manifest. So let's begin. God, universe, source, thank you. We're so grateful that you've blessed this world with calm and peace for all. This calm and peace has spread like ripples, soothing the hearts of every soul. Thank you for opening our hearts to abundance, allowing each of us to live our most authentic life and helping us to create our own heaven on earth. We thank you for the love and deep heart-to-heart -heart connection that surrounds us every day in our relationships. We thank you for the abundance of health and aliveness we feel radiating from every cell in our and our family's bodies. Thank you for the gift of walking this life with us and guiding us every step of the way through your messages. We hear you through our own intuition, and we feel you walking right by our sides, and we overflow with gratitude. Thank you for financial abundance and abundance of opportunities and miracles, blessings, and prosperity in every way. We know that you want us to succeed so that we can show others how you want them to succeed too. Thank you for the boundless love, kindness, empathy, and compassion that binds us all together. Thank you for the laughter, fun, moments of pure delight that fill us every day, especially today. God, Universe Source, thank you for blessing us beyond measure and allowing us to use our souls, gifts, talents, skills, and abilities to serve the world. We love you. I love you. And in this we pray. Amen. Friends, we're working on some pretty major things over here. And if you wouldn't mind saying a little prayer that these things come to fruition, if they're God's will, we'd so appreciate it. And please add a little prayer in for any specific thing you need right now too. Have a beautiful, blessed day. And don't forget to submit your contact info at theangelmedium.com if you'd like me to channel the name of one of your angels for you. Sending you peace, bliss, and many blessings.